Well, hi there, food friends. It is Kevin, and welcome to Cavalcade of Food. <laughs> hi there, I'm Ralph behind the camera. And we have a chalkboard, <laughs> finally. And today's episode, as you can see, or today's lesson is rhubarb turnovers. Turnovers. So that's what we're going to do. And uh, we love rhubarb. And this is um, really the season for rhubarb kind of late spring. It's one of the earlier crops. Uh, and here in Michigan, it's mm, getting close to ready. I have a couple of rhubarb plants uh, outside of along the garage and um, they need maybe two more weeks before I can start harvesting. Now you transplanted those, didn't you? Aren't they pretty yes, hardy? So they, rhubarb is pretty hardy, right? They, it is pretty hardy. And um, last year I had a bumper crop of rhubarb. I mean, the rhubarb grew like crazy, more than I could even use. And so in the fall, I went and cut it all down and washed it and chopped it up. And I have a few bags of it in the freezer. And so that's actually the rhubarb I'm using, Ralph, right here. Oh, okay. So we're gonna make these turnovers. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our filling. So I've got two good hefty cups of rhubarb here, okay? And to that, I'm going to add um, a half a cup of water. It's not a lot. You're like, oh really? But rhubarb is filled with water. I mean, it is. there's a lot of water in rhubarb. Uh, it's also, for those of you unfamiliar, very tart. Very tart, and you don't eat the leaves because those are actually poisonous. They are. They're don't bad eat for the you. leaves. You only eat the stalks, and um, very fibrous and very good. Um, a lot of nutrition, a lot of minerals and vitamins. Yeah, it almost looks like celery in a way, except the colors a little different. You can see there's some pieces in there that are a little bit more red. So if you ran out of rhubarb, could you psych somebody out and use <laughs> celery and sugar instead? No, just kidding. You could. It definitely wouldn't taste the same because with rhubarb you want that tartness. Yeah, there's a distinct flavor, a very um, unique flavor that rhubarb has. We used to eat it growing wild in the alley at the, as a kid Yeah, and put dip it in sugar and it was like a little treat. But you, once you get, well, it's an acquired taste, but once you get used to it, if you do uh, enjoy it, you'll enjoy all the things you can make out absolutely. of it. Absolutely. And so, um, so on its own, it's really too tart. Uh, so I've got a third of a cup of sugar here and I'm going to add that. Okay. So half a, uh, two cups of rhubarb, a third of a cup of sugar, half a cup of water. We're going to let that come to a boil. We basically want to break this rhubarb down and get it really nice and soft. Okay. And because it was frozen, it'll break down sooner than if you were using fresh, right? Right. I, I would think that this will probably break down in about 10 minutes, if that. Um, if we were using fresh rhubarb, it uh, might take 15 minutes or so. But, you know, when you freeze something like rhubarb that has a lot of water in it, it changes the molecular structure, the cells of the, uh, it, it's actually a vegetable, um, break. And so now when we're cooking it, it'll, it'll kind of soften up real quick. All right, our rhubarb is tender. And Ralph, you can see I'm even t crushing it. I'm getting a rhubarb facial here. I'm crushing it with a spoon. Ooh, I'm getting this, the aroma. It's very strong and very nice. Uh, yeah. Like I said, uh, I love rhubarb. So it's Nothing really smells like that. It, it's pretty much tender. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. Um, What's next? This has been going about seven, ten minutes. Now, I've got three tablespoons of cornstarch here. Okay. Okay. And I've got, oh, maybe a third of a cup of water. Plop. Plop. And I'm going to add the, the cornstarch to the water here. Now, we use cornstarch in, in here, Ralph, as a thickener. Okay. Because we want to thicken that rhubarb up. Oh, okay. Now I'm making what we call a slurry. Okay, with the fringe on top? <laughs> <laughs> I just knew you were going to go there, yes. Well, no fringe, but I've got some water. So that a slurry is just when you add water to, to make it easier to work with? Yeah, well that way too, when you add it in here, 
it will clump. Gotcha. Okay, sometimes cornstarch or you add flour and it doesn't dissolve easily or it gets caught up in the, the food. Now we've kind of made it into a liquid form here. And if and you if you didn't thicken this up, then when you went to put it in your pastry, right. it would just drip right this out. This is our filling. I mean, look, you know, I mean, the the part with the rhubarb is okay, but it's still pretty pretty saucy. Wouldn't you say? Yes. Don't it's get saucy with me, Bernays. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's still um. So there's still you can there's still visible pieces of the stalks in there. So, so what we're gonna do? Well, it looks like milk, but that's cornstarch and water. Cornstarch and water, and I don't know if I'll need all of it. But I'm going to put a little at a time here. And cornstarch, it thickens as it heats, as it cooks. So you see what? See how it's gotten thicker a little bit? You can tell, can't you? Yeah, we made pea soup already, though. Oh, <laughs> this is, that was last Not episode. Soup, but, know. but yeah, it's really simple, yeah, uh, breaking it down. It needs to be thicker than that, even. Okay. But you can see how quickly... From just a, a second ago when I was mentioning how this you could still see the stalks now it is turning into like a a nice mush yeah a nice filling that's it we when we want it you know we it, again this is gonna be our our filling for our our turnover so we want it as thick as we can get it almost like a you know think of a pie filling mm -hmm. okay so and as it cools it will probably thicken up more right uh, it, it might, but it really, uh, the cornstarch, you can see it working. All right, I'm going to put this all this in here so we'll have it. So that's three tablespoons of cornstarch diluted with some water. And normally, like, you could do three tablespoons of water, three tablespoons of cornstarch, an equal amount of both. Okay. Okay. And you have, so, um, you have what kind of a heat? Low, medium? It's, a, it's at medium right now. And it's just enough because again we want it we want there look how look at that now see that yes it's getting it's getting that viscosity that yes, you want that's what we want is that right the word there. yes viscosity thick so you know what the filling is pretty much done i'm going to take it off the heat and then we're going to get things ready i'm going to we're going to let this cool and while this is cooling we'll put together our dough for our crust. So now we're gonna put together our pastry for the rhubarb turnovers, okay? Okay. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sift together our dry ingredients. So I've got two cups here of all-purpose flour. All right, I'm gonna get that in the sifter. We're basically gonna sift our uh, dry ingredients together. Now if you don't have a flour sifter you could put this just all in a big bowl and whisk, use a whisk to whisk it together. Or if you have a sieve that works perfectly well too. Okay, so there's our flour, two cups of flour. I've got a teaspoon of salt, just regular salt, and then I've got a tablespoon of baking powder. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna put that in there. All right. Now we do a little sift a sift a sift a. We get that <laughs> through. <laughs> yeah, that's. We always say there's more of a science to baking because you have to have really specialized equipment and you have to have precise measurements of certain ingredients. Yeah, and you know, honestly, there was a time that, you know, certainly in our mother's generation that your mom had a flour sifter. My mom sure did. I mean, it was just a kind of a standard thing. It's not so much anymore. Uh, so if you don't have one, it's okay. You can use a whisk. They still sell them, right? They still sell them. As a matter of fact, um, you had asked me about this recipe, and I found this recipe in an old newspaper clipping from 1963. From a local paper uh, up here? From a local paper, the Sandusky, Michigan, Republican Tribune. That was their one of the papers in Sandusky. And, um, you know, like so many people, they, they published recipes. Uh, you know, they had a, a food section and, and there was always recipes in there. And, and people would clip them out? Them. And yeah. And that's just where I found it. So it's from Sandusky, Michigan, up here in the thumb. Mm -hmm. 
1963. Um, our, we've got our we've got our dry ingredients now. I've got a third of a cup of shortening. Okay, so this is just vegetable shortening. Mom's little baby loves shortening. <laughs> So we're going to put that in there. Okay. okay. So now what we have to do is we have to do the cut in. Cut or in. Or in other words, we want to, mm. right, we want to mix these things together. Oh, yeah. I keep my uh, my shortening in um, uh, the refrigerator, and it helps if it's cold. Uh, it helps to cut it in better. Uh, I guess if you wanted to, you could use um, a combination here of half butter and half shortening. Mm -hmm. mm, I don't know if all butter would work, but I'm using all shortening and that was the recipe. And of course in 1963, that was fairly a fairly common ingredient. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get this to sort of... Integrated and where it's kind of clumpy? Yeah, it, so it looks kind of grainy. Um, and like a like a coarse meal, like a corn meal or something like that. And so we're just going to work this in. So Ralph, take a look at the the mix now with the shortening cut in. Oh yeah, see, it's very grainy, like you said. Yeah. And you know, we were talking about uh, people doing a lot of their home baking now and staying home. And I wanted to remind folks that Kevin actually has quite a few episodes uh, of his own and ones actually some with friends that um, are on cavalcade of making bread yep yeah nothing better than homemade bread so it's not as hard as you think I know everybody's trying it and there are some episodes you can check out on cavalcade of food um, I've got about two-thirds of a cup of milk here and I'm going to add that all at once all at once and we're going to bring this together to make our dough. Oh, okay. So, if you we'll see if it's still a little dry, I'll add a little bit more milk. You could you could go up to 3 quarters, I think, of a of a cup of milk, but you always say to add whole milk, don't use skim. Yeah, or 2%, you know, which is fine. Okay. But um but skim milk is not good for for, for baking. Now this is a pastry as opposed to like some of the I've seen you making doughs, other dough, and um, this seems lighter already. It seems like it's not. Does it? See, is the texture different than when you're doing like uh, bread or well, uh, pie crust? Yeah, it's, it is a little different. It is more like a pie crust to me, uh, a little bit, although it has, you know, a lot of the similar ingredients. Okay, I think that is going to be enough milk. Dope. Doesn't seem too, too dry. So now what I'm going to do is um, roll this out. Now I've got a, a uh, if you had a board or even if you don't have a board, you can do it on the counter. I like rolling dough on a cloth. Okay, and so I've just got a cotton um, kitchen towel here or a tea towel. Uh, I find over that a cutting board over a cutting board I find that I like this method the best so just use a clean cloth I also have one of these rolling pin covers which is just basically a, a plastic sleeve that goes over the rolling pin and then the key is to make sure that your surface is good and floured now you can just do the flour however you want it I have a couple of these old they don't make them anymore these old Tupperware uh, little flour sifters. Like a and sprinkler? This, yeah, exactly, a sprinkler. There's probably a name for it. Those of you who are into vintage stuff, you can tell me what the Tupperware name for this was, um, this gizmo. But it's good for like flour, for powdered sugar, you know what I mean? Things like that. Yeah, when you just want to sprinkle it lightly. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is we're going to put this on the board here and we're going to knead it a little bit gently um, so I think I've kneaded it enough now what I'm gonna do is we need to divide this into six pieces okay so I'm gonna try to make it kind of a like a loaf and then cut it into six yeah like a rectangle segments like sort of like a rectangle here okay okay 
all those years of working with Plato have really come in handy. <laughs> right? So, all right, I'm going to use my, my bench scraper here. First, we'll cut it in half, okay? And so that gives us two. And then if I take my, my two halves and I cut it into thirds, oh. gives me three there. And three there. Okay, so there we go. We got six pieces. And you can almost see that how it's kind of airy, like like because it's going to be a pastry. Well, two. Remember, we put a tablespoon of baking, baking powder powder right in here, and that's our leavener. And you'll notice Kevin's not. Um, he's just was just shaping it. He's not overworking it. That's important not to overdo it so, so yeah now what I've got to do is let me get some of this stuff off we'll come back we're gonna roll these out and make our our rounds basically for our pastries our, our turnovers Six turnovers pieces yes. of dough I see you added more flour I added a little more flour on the board now I'm gonna kind of get this started we need to roll this out Ralph into a round of about six inches so let's see so is it supposed to be heart shaped <laughs> or well, you never saw around a round heart before yeah I guess well, it's let kind me of see so uh-huh we're okay. Let's see if we can make it a little bit, maybe. I'm gonna try to do the, how, look at this, see? Now it's more rounder. Now it's more rounder. Okay. All right. So then we're gonna take um, our filling here, a quarter cup, roughly. Look at how thick that is. And it's fibrous too. You can see how it's kind of, um, you know, drippy, but it's got the sinewy kind of almost, <laughs> I hate to say seaweedy, but it kind of almost reminds me of that. But but more, um, more, more sugary and mm -hmm. jammy, jelly, gummy, gooey. So I'm going to... So you put it on one side? One side, okay. Oh, these are going to be good, I can tell then already. Then we flip this side over, okay, oh, and yeah. we want to cover it. It's like a sweet kind rhubarb of, pierogi. Well, yeah, we're going to kind of make a, a little flap here, and then we're going to take a fork, and we're going to crimp. Just on those edges or the just all around? The, just just on the kind of the circumference. Oh, like the seam. The, yes, exactly on the seam. Thank you. Like that. Kind of push that, seal that dough. Seal that deal. So just enough to make it like not that. run out. See? Okay. But do you need to score it or anything so it, no. the steam comes out? or? Then I'm going to use a spatula to lift, and, and we got place. a parchment-lined paper. I'm going to hopefully get all six of them on here. So again, you know what I'm going to do this time is we're going to start with more of a round more shape. More of a round shape. Keep keep flop, you know keep your flour on your board here so we don't stick. But I'm going to pat it out so that it's sort of round. We'll start with that and see. All right. How that goes. So you know what? I'm just going to keep doing this. Okay. When we get down to the last one, we'll come back. Pop them in the and oven. And we'll get them in the oven. I, the, uh, the old uh, uh, beautiful Westinghouse is preheating to 425 degrees. All right. We'll be okay. right back. So. Yeah, they're looking more round. They're like... They're <laughs> Yeah, I found if you shape the dough a little bit before you start rolling. All right, I'm going to put in the lap, you know, how much of the filling we have left. So, pretty much just, we just had enough for the six. Now, two, you want to be careful that when you put the filling in, 
you don't want to come too close to the edge. Right. You know, you want to have leave yourself enough room so that you can bring this dough over and kind of see I'm oozing out a little bit here. Kind of I'll pinch eat, it first. I'll eat the mistakes. We'll pinch it together first and kind of I like to kind of flat roll it onto itself like that. And then do the crimping with then the do fork. The crimping, yeah. So then we will crimp. Now these need to bake about 15, 15 minutes or so or until golden brown. Could you, could you um, brush them with butter to make them more golden brown? You could, but a, what I'm going to do is sprinkle them with a little sugar. At the suggestion of our sous chef, Miss Mary Ann. Miss Mary Ann had a great idea and said, you know, if, in for a penny, in for a pound. If you're going to put some sugar, so sugar it up, kid. We like sugar, and we are in the sugar capital of Michigan, home of Pioneer. Pioneer Sugar, Mich Big Chief Sh and Big Chief Sugar, with Michigan Sugar Company. So what I'm going to do, again, you know, we know we've got a tart filling. There's no sugar in the pastry, so we're just going to. Put a nice little sprinkling of sugar on the top. If you had some of that Damara sugar, the, the really coarse. Um, Can you put a big R in this one for me? Well, we'll just have to remember <laughs> that's for you. Because <laughs> it's okay. got extra sugar. Anyways, all right, so now we're done. We're going to bake these off, like I said, 15 minutes or so until they're nice and golden brown. Hot oven, though. 425 degrees. All right, I uh, checked at 15. They were a little too light for me so I left him in another five so now we're at 20 ay 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 <laughs> oh my uh, god <laughs> they're spitting up there yeah a little bit well they look the crust looks good this one well I was afraid we'd get a little leakage out of some of them this one really kind of blew up yeah well, that's all right. But um, we'll eat them with some nice ice cream, and yeah, no one will are, be the wiser. The crust looks great. Yes, um, and it's they smell terrific. So here's what I would suggest when we make these again. We have a let, we'll have a lot of rhubarb, so I will make them again. Is maybe when I seal them, maybe use a little water. To bring the dough together. Oh, to create a better or an, seal. Or an egg, you know, a beaten egg or something under there. That might help it. Okay. But, okay, we're going to let these cool down for a few minutes because they are, they're radiating a lot of heat right now. So too much, too, too hot to eat. And we'll come back, but I'm dying to try yeah. them. Me too. Well, here is one of our turnovers, Ralph. Boy, they're big. They are. They are big. They, you know, they puffed up a little bit. Again, remember, in that pastry, we included some uh, some baking powder. Now look how flaky that is. Look What'd at you that. call me? Oh, the... <laughs> yes. Yeah, nothing personal. But see that? Look at that. Those remind me of these things my grandmother used to make on the farm where she would take leftover pie crust and make little... Sweet, simple sugar turnovers or cookies out of them. How is it? Are you getting mm. Uh, mm. any of the filling? That one didn't have a lot of filling in it with more the crust. How hot Which is it? Which is almost, um, it's warm. It's not hot. Um, they've cooled off so I bet somewhat. It, I bet um, it'd be good with a glass of milk. It would, or a cup of coffee, mm, honestly. Yeah. Um, the crust is almost milky hmm I don't know how else to describe it and of course it had milk in it but um but, yeah. you're, but you're getting that creaminess on uh -huh. it mm. wow oh doesn't that look good so here let me take it let me let me get in here a little bit so that our friends can really see the 
the it's inside. A, wow, that looks like a almost like a homemade Hostess fruit pie. <laughs> you know what? It's sort of the idea. Um, except I think those are fried, but these are like a fry pie. These are baked, obviously. But you know what? Um, really good. And although we used rhubarb to make the filling, you could make a filling really with any fruit. Uh, Compote fruit. Yeah. Um, mm, this would be great with blueberries. You like how he's going to just sit there and eat that all without even offering me a bite? <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. I'm dying to try it. I don't know. Why. Mm, all right. Stop me. Okay. Go ahead. No, I'll, I'll wait. I mean, really? we're, well, we're. we're all right. I, I'm not going to eat any more of this. <laughs> that the rest of that is for you. Okay. okay? So, anyways, um, what fun! It's always fun to be with you. Um, it's extra fun to cook with you and to have you here with us at Cavalcade uh, as we made these rhubarb turnovers, celebrating rhubarb season, season uh, here in Michigan and perhaps where you are and wherever you are. We want to keep sending our very best wishes for your health, for your safety. Stay strong. And um, as things start to somewhat open up, um, be careful. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again right here on Cavalcade of Food. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time. Bye, y'all. Bye.